A Q is a market. And when I say Q, I'm talking about a line that you stand in, or a line, it could be a virtual line that you get in line to wait for something where you have a place in that line. That's actually a market, and you can model it exactly like you model a regular market using supply and demand curves. So the, the basic idea here is that regular supply and demand curves involve you allocating a scarce resource, which is your money budget, two things according to how much you value them. Well, a Q is the same thing, except instead of money being the scarce resource, time is the scarce resource. So let's actually map this onto the regular supply and demand curve map. And I think it's best if I start out by just uh, talking about the regular demand curve the way I normally teach it in my principles of economics courses. If you're talking about the market for t-shirts and you would like to derive the demand curve for t-shirts, what you should do is you should go out and ask everybody you know how much would you pay for a t-shirt and maybe take a photo of them so that you can do this little project and then you line those people up in order of how much they would pay for the t-shirt. So the person who would pay the most for the t-shirt the $50 for the t-shirt, that maps onto their place on the demand curve. Like this person would pay $50. This person would pay $49. This person would pay $48. $47, $46. And that's how you get your demand curve. That's just how it works. So if you're talking about a concert by a really popular artist, you might do the exact same thing. You would go out and you would say, how many hours would you wait in line to get into that concert by this person you love? And maybe some people are like, whoa, I would wait eight hours in line for that person. And someone else says, I would wait five hours. And you sort of take a picture of each person and write down their answer. And then you come back and you line those people up in order. Um, what you're going to find is that you get a demand curve. It looks pretty much exactly like the regular old money-based demand curve. This person would wait eight hours, this person would wait 7.5 hours, this person would wait seven hours, and you just derive that demand curve in exactly the same way you did before. Now, let's look a little bit at the supply curve. Um, previously, the supply curve, um, well, actually, I'm not going to talk that much about the supply curve other than to say the market equilibrium, one of the things economists like about markets is that they make sure the people who value the product the most, um, now, of course, by value, it could be the richest people get it, and that's one problem with, with markets. Um, but if everyone has the same amount of money, which with, with lines, people do have the same amount of uh, time, generally, then the people who value it the most are the ones to get the product. If we're talking about a concert, there's a certain number of seats in that concert, so our supply curve might be vertical. Now, of course, there's a whole economic market that determines um, should that artist even have a concert to begin with, and that would have an upward sloping supply curve potentially, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But once the concert has been set, everything's all set up, the costs are all sunk costs, then you have a fixed number of seats in the stadium, and the people who value it the most, the people willing to give up the most of their time, they are going to be the ones ending up in the stadium. So it, it has that nice uh, property of markets, uh, lines do, that the people getting the product are determined by who values it the most. Now, you might actually say, okay, people don't necessarily have exactly the same amount of time because if you're a mother with 10 children and you, you work as a nurse and you know, you, you have all of these commitments in life, you probably can't, certainly the opportunity cost of your time is going to make it so high that you can't really go and spend eight hours standing in line for your favorite artist. So it's not 100% equalizing, but I think we need to start thinking about markets more in terms of allocation of scarce resources because there are more creative ways of using markets, just like lines. Um, for example, I think in crypto economics, tokens, um, if you give everybody the same number of tokens and allow them to make decisions that express their values and that express what they 
care most about. That can be a little mini market that equalizes things in a way that money perhaps does not. Because income inequality is a huge issue, but if you can create many economic spaces where there's a more equal distribution of resources, that could just be a creative way of playing around with markets for the future. And of course, quadratic voting plays around with the idea of giving people a voting budget. Like, the, we're going to vote on ordinances for an online space, for example, and you get 10 votes per year, you get to allocate those votes however is most aligned with your, uh, your values and your priorities. So there's lots of different types of markets that use things other than money to derive the demand curve. And that's just really fun.